Hello, I'm Javis Lewis, and today I'm going to show you how to replace a small Amazon instance with a larger one. This Amazon instance will have CentOS 6.5 and Plesk 11.5 installed, and we're going to make the system, we're going to bring the system back and make everything work as it did before on bigger and better hardware. Today we're going to have a look at what happens if the Amazon instance that you've launched is too small for your needs. So let's have a look what's happening here. I'm hosting one website on an Amazon EC2 small instance. This is the website here. And it's fairly responsive if you just browse the website. But as soon as I try and log in, it's very slow and very unresponsive. I'm hosting this on CentOS 6.5 with Plesk 11.5 installed and this is the Plesk control panel here. On the bottom right I can see that I've got a couple of problems here. I've got a problem on the services and CPU. These are more or less the same problem. 81.9% Apache CPU usage and in fact my overall CPU usage my overall CPU usage is 101.9%. Is that even possible? I wonder. Not really, but it means my site's too busy. Or oh, actually, it's nice that the site's busy. It just means that the Amazon hardware that I've put behind it is too small. So, what we want to do now is go to the Amazon AWS control panel, create an Amazon machine image, of my instance and then relaunch it with bigger, better, longer, uncut hardware. And this is how we do that. So first of all, we go and log into our management console. And under here, you can see all the Amazon services, EC2, that's the virtual service in the cloud this should show me the currently running instances there we go two running instances i've got three in total one is stopped that was just a beta version that i've later replaced and this one is live and this one is live plesk summit 2014 this is the one that is currently hosting the website i've shown you and the control panel i've shown you so it's an m1 small instance and it's healthy, it's just, it's just too busy. So first thing we wanna do is create an AMI, AMI, or Amazon machine image from this. We have to do that so that we can use that as a template to launch another instance with bigger better hardware. So here's how we do that. Just tick it, tick the instance you want, hit actions, and say create image. And as soon as you do that, you are being prompted to name the instance. So I'm going to call mine screencast so that I just remember what it is. And the image description, Plesk 11.5, super busy small instance. No reboot, that's, whoop, no reboot. I'm going to leave all the defaults checked. I'm just going to go and create an image. For this to happen, Amazon will shut down your instance. It can only create an image when it's shut down. So if you're, uh, please keep this in mind when you have uh, clients surfing the website, the, uh, all the websites and the entire server is gonna go down for a short period of time. On here on the left-hand side, you can see that under images, AMIs, those are the AMIs that I currently have. So I have this one, this one, and that one. Uh, they are all ready and available to be relaunched. Those are the ones we're not using. This one, however, with a spinning thing named Screencast, that's the one that's currently being created. So we need to give Amazon a couple of minutes here. You can watch the screen, grab a coffee while this happens. It shouldn't be too long. It depends, of course, on how big your instance is and how much storage you've got attached to it. Well, this has taken about 10 minutes or so, but my AMI is now ready and I can populate another instance with it. If we're back here on the AMI page, right here, we can just tick this one and click launch and that'll create a brand new instance from that machine file. 
the first thing that I'm going to have to do is I'm going to pick an instance. Uh, what kind of hardware, how fast this is going to be. And if you're confused about this, like I am all the time, you can go to the Amazon pricing page. That's aws.amazon.com forward slash ec2 forward slash pricing at the time of writing. And on here, not only can you see what each instance has to offer under which distribution here, you can also see how it compares perhaps to your previous instance. So right now I have the M1 small instance. They call it at uh, March 2014, a general purpose previous generation instance. And it provides me with one CPU, which is equal to one ECU. That's how Amazon determine how fast things are rocking and rolling in the world of hardware. They've introduced this term because technically I could rent another instance that also has one virtual CPU, say if I go with the M3 medium instance now, it also has one CPU here, yeah, you can see that, but the ECU is three times higher. So what they want to do is that over time faster processors come out and now one core can do more than it could do two years ago. So right now if I'd go with the M3 medium instance, it would already be three times faster than my current instance. It would also have about uh, two, three times the amount of memory. And rather than one traditional hard drive, I now have an SSD that powers it. Uh, I could go with that, M3 medium, or I could go for M3 large, or I could stick with M1s, or I could pick one of these. Up to us. I think I'm gonna try and go with the M3 medium, and I'll see if that all works out here. So, back to the Amazon cloud interface. Was a general purpose M3 medium? There it is. So we click that. And you could go review and launch if you're happy that all the other details are correct. I'm just going to go through it step by step here. So next, configure instance details. I only want one. You could choose to have several others. Availability zone, you could say where exactly on the US East Coast you'd want that. I'm happy to have it wherever, really. Shut down behavior, just stop. I'm gonna leave all those defaults here. Add storage, 10 gig, that may not be, yeah, maybe for this test instance, it's gonna be fine. And delete on termination means that all this storage, should I ever terminate that instance, will be freed up and deleted. That's exactly what I want. Tag the instance, we could give it a name and we can call it a bigger instance. Or we'll just call it M3 medium big instance the way this works is a key value pair so my key is name and the value of name is whatever i put in here but i could create other tags and you know give it a client and a value client could have a value of you know abc limited or acme hosting whatever so that's how this works i found that very confusing i thought key well name i'll just replace that and, and call my instance you know, whatever I want to name it, but that's not really how it works. They've left it uh, in, in proper developer fashion. This is a proper key value naming scheme. And uh, the key with name could be a value of, you know, my actual name. You get the picture. Let's add a security group. This is a predefined, almost like a firewall. I've had one before here, which is just this one, Plesk Beta 6, which is a replica of the security group that was app generated by the by the image so on the bottom here you can see what ports are open and what are closed these are the recommended ports that parallels give you and then we go review and launch so i'm getting a couple uh, of warnings here that's cool first thing is your instance configuration is not eligible for the free usage tier that means i'm going to be charged for what i'm doing here which is fine and the second one is the fact that uh, my instance is open to the world in my case i need that because i want it to be accessible from the web and i'd like to ftp into it so i have to do that and here's a little summary And all that remains to be done is click the big launch button. I can also choose a security key here. In fact, I have to do that. I can either create a new one or I can pick one that I already have. So I've got a couple here. I'm going to use this one. 
these <clears throat> these security keys are Amazon's way of keeping the bad guys out. So I can't log into my instance with the with the, as the root user and with a password. That is not possible, and that is really really good because that means brute force attacks as a root user will never be successful. I have to have a key file and then I can log in as root and I don't need a password. It's very convenient, but um, it also means that if I ever lose that file, then I could no longer log into the instance as root. But as you've seen here, if that ever happens, you could just launch a new instance and define a new security key, download that, keep that in a safe place, and then you can log in again. So this is gonna take another couple of minutes here until the instance is launched. You can always have a look on it over here, history, you see two, three running instances. So one is still initializing, this is the one, M3 medium. Now, <clears throat> there's another thing that we need to do, very important. While we shut down our previous slow instance and retire it, so a ticket here, ticket here, then go to actions and don't say terminate because that will delete everything else. Just say stop. And that's cool, we'll do that. Doing so will also free up my elastic IP that was associated with this instance. So the way Amazon work is that each instance gets a public URL. This was it at one point. And it has a default public IP, and I can also associate an elastic IP. And the difference between the two is that a public IP is just assigned to an instance, and I don't really have control over what that value is. And it means that this could change at some point, should I recreate an instance, like in my case here, there'll be a new IP available, and I'd have to go to each of my domains and point it at the new IP, so that's not a very efficient way of doing it. Instead, what you may want to do is create an elastic IP. This is free from Amazon, and you associate the elastic IP with the new instance. So therefore, we have now basically replaced the server, but we're keeping its old IP address. I'll show you how to do that next. While this thing is powering down, we go over here to network and security elastic IPs. And here we have my, my two IPs. This one here, the top one, is the one I would like to associate with my new instance. Let's see if it works already. Associate address, click into it, little drop down comes up. This is the instance that I'd like to put that IP to. So I'll just select it and associate. Cool. M3 medium. So my old IP is now associated with a new instance. This is going to take another couple of minutes, of course, until uh, this is all put through the ringer. So I'd say give it another five minutes or so. This is still initializing anyway. As soon as this turns into a little green tick box with two out of two checks, we can see, whoops, we, we can see what Plesk thinks of it and see if we can speak to our new instance. We're back and it took less than five minutes to launch the instance from an Amazon machine image, an AMI, an AMI, whatever we want to call it. Now we can see here that tick box uh, is ticked. Two out of two checks have been passed, no alarm, we like all that. Let's see if we can log in to Plesk. Now let's refresh the page first and see if it comes back. This is a good indication if the page would, if the page would hang, then that means the IP is not resolving to that new instance. This is, it takes a few minutes. It, it usually is pretty fast, but it's one of those things. Looks like we can log in and we're back. Good stuff. So we can immediately see that our CPU usage has appear, apparently gone down a little bit. That's good. Total CPU usage was also a problem a minute ago. Um, that's good, so that's on its way down. That's a good sign. If we go to the left hand side here to health monitoring, that'll take us to the big health monitoring screen where you can download your configuration file, tweak it, re-upload it, but you can also rev you can also detect hardware changes here. So services here, this is 64%. 
see what it looked like over the last three hours. Yeah, this is when our machine was down, and this is us now having brought it back. But Plesk still believes this is uh, running on the on the older hardware. So tick, check, click, even detect hardware changes. This is especially important if your disk sizes have changed. And once that little message pops up here, you know everything has been applied. Yeah, so where I'm coming from, I think everything's worked flawlessly. And now I have a bigger instance. I've got larger hardware running the exact same configuration I did before. We also reread the IP for good measure and we've updated the health monitoring settings so that Plesk now knows that some new hardware is in town. I hope this was useful for you guys. In a moment, I'm gonna be setting up more of a WordPress site. Ah, oh, there we go. Look, we can see that the usage has already gone down here. That's, that's really good news. In a moment, I'm gonna set up a new WordPress website on this instance, and we're gonna have a look how to use the wonderful P2 theme by Automatic. Stay tuned.